Hello, I'm at my grandparents' house and I have my grandma's collection of children's books from when she was a kid. So they're from like the 40s and they're really cool. This first book is Toby and Sue from 1937. The inside cover says to Virginia, May 7th, 1943. And I love the cover of this because of how a piece of paper got stuck to it. And now there's like this kid writing on it, which I love to see because my grandma had the most beautiful cursive handwriting so it's really funny to see her like childhood handwriting and the period is giant you can tell she's like learning to write i love the style of the black line work how it's kind of like brush strokes and they're really open and loose and then the way that the colors are printed you can see how like different colors are layered on top of each other. I also love the little girl's like red gingham outfit and her red cheeks with her watering can. She's super cute. It's interesting because this book is written in 1937. So it's before the time when kids books were like about kids getting into trouble and stuff. A lot of kids books from this era are just like kids doing good, kids doing the right thing. And you can really tell because there's like no issues in this plot. This book is a story about Toby and Sue. There are these two kids and Toby is picking flowers for his mom's birthday. And then they come across these little baby rabbits and they decide to give that to Toby's mom for her birthday instead. So I just thought it was like funny to see this trend. I really like this cover page, the way that it incorporates the text and the images like back and forth. And then there's this one page in the middle of the book where my grandma scribbled all over it. Up here, it kind of looks like she was trying to write something, like I can make out some cursive letters, but I don't know what it says. So that is Toby and Sue. Then we have my favorite, The Pokey Little Puppy. So this was originally published in 1942, but this is the fourth printing from 1943. And the reason that I love this one so much is because when I used to come to my grandparents' house, my grandma would read to me The Pokey Little Puppy before bed but she got me a newer edition, so this one is from 2002. And I love that I can compare them. I also never realized that she had a copy from when she was a kid, so it just made it even more special. One of the coolest things, I think, is that this early edition came out before Golden Books had introduced the Golden Spine, and I love the Golden Spine. And then, like, the backs are all so different. This one lists the Golden Library. And this one just has like a little note from the editor. They're both great. It's mostly like word for word, picture for picture, the same book. The only difference is that the original one, there's a page right here with a spider. It's next to the frog page and it says, he wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a big black spider. And they removed that in the 2002 edition, which I thought was interesting. I was like, I wonder if spiders are too scary for little kids. The pages are like a little bit off from each other because the earlier edition starts off with just one page while the newer edition starts on a spread. So everything is a little bit misaligned, but it's the same contents. And then the other main difference is that this book, like, you know, color printing wasn't as easy as it was in 2002. So the pages alternate between color and black and white. This is the one that I was most excited to find. Next we have Merry Christmas Judy. I'm not sure what year the book is from, but on the inside cover it says to Ginny from Eddie, Jackie, and Ellen, Christmas 1945. So at least 1945. We just found this book last night. It was actually like in this drawer that's never opened and that drawer was filled with dog food and there hasn't been a dog in this house for like at least eight years. So we think that the mice like found their way through the drawer and then they were putting dog food there. So this was in there with the dog food, but my mom said that she used to love this book and you can tell it's very well loved. The cover is actually detached, but this one has such beautiful like vintage feeling illustrations. I really like these pages where they combine the text and image in like one sentence. Like they put Michael's monkey in the wagon, but it doesn't say the word monkey, it just has a picture. I just really like that because then you can also like look over here and find those toys in the wagon. And the color printing is so vibrant. A lot of these early picture books, they have a very limited color palette, which is really nice for the design of the book. I love how each of the characters has such a distinct outfit. I also love the like really identified cheeks of this era. And then Judy has a little doll that looks just like her, which is so adorable. 
I also always just love a tiny little compact book. It's so cute. Then we have Wee White Saddle. This one was really cool to find because this is my grandpa's and it's actually signed by the author. It says, Happy Times at the Pony Show. And then the author's name, Ethel Hall Miller. I think the cover is so funny because it says this quote, my mother was very proud of me underneath the horse drawing. But what I think is really cool about this book is that the author and publisher are from a small town in Ohio called Poland, which is where my grandpa lived for a little bit when he was younger. And I also love the foreword and a letter to the boys and girls that are in the beginning of the book. The first paragraph of this section just says, Ponies do not talk except in enchanted orchards. It was in an enchanted orchard that the pony, White Saddle, told her happy story to little Betty and her brother Bill. She is called White Saddle because the spot of white hair on her back is shaped exactly like a saddle. Another cool thing about this book is in the middle it has this little like thicker piece of paper that says cut me out and stand me up and it's the horse. So then you can have this little like paper doll horse of white saddle but I think that not cut out it's a great image just like the silhouette and the writing right here. It looks really cute and kind of goofy in a good way. Next up is Little Toot from 1939. This one is probably like my favorite storyline throughout all of these books. It's like about this anthropomorphic tugboat and it's just super cute. I also like the way that there's like different types of boats in the story and it kind of teaches kids about what those boats do. And Little Toot is like a little tugboat and he just wants to play and he's kind of scared of going in the ocean. And he also doesn't have like a very loud horn and when he tries to make noise, just these little steam clouds come out. But this story reminds me of Rudolph because of those steam clouds because it ends up being like a superpower type thing that the other boats don't have. And in the end, Little Toot saves the day. And then it's also super cute because his dad is Big Toot and his grandpa is Grandfather Toot. I think that this first page illustration is so beautiful. I love all the colors and the painterly style. I like all of the white space in this book. I think it leaves a lot to the imagination. I really like the pages that are like black and white and red. And then the back spread has this really nice map. I love the pops of red and this little squiggly border. So yeah, this is a super sweet book and it's also in really good condition. So yeah, I love Little Toot. Then we have The Proud Little Kitten from 1944. This cover is so sweet. This little cat with the flowers would make such a good framed print. And then when you open it up, I love the pattern on this side and how it's just one color. And the font on this page is really sweet. This book again alternates black and white. It's drawn with like pencil or graphite. So the drawings have a really nice grainy texture. I like the way the drawings on this one kind of wrap around the words. And this is one of those picture books that has a lot of words. This is a story about a kitten that lives with a puppy family. The kitty lives with them so she thinks that she's a puppy too. And then the mom is like, you're a kitty, that's why we call you kitty. So then kitty wants to find her mom and her and one of her puppy siblings, they go around and they meet a bunch of different animals. They talk to a bumblebee, frog, a skunk. She thinks the skunk is her mom for a second, but it's not. She talks to a robin, a rabbit, and finally a cow. And then the cow is like, your mom is actually a super brave cat that's on a ship. And so then the kitty's satisfied and she's like, my mom is super cool and brave. And she just goes back to the puppies. I think that this book is supposed to just like teach kids about different types of animals. And it's also a fun adventure. The last page, my grandma did some scribbles around the drawing. And I think that her scribbles are so beautiful and like, have a feminine kind of like Laura Owens type feel. It's like she was writing something but not writing words and I think the way that she framed them around this drawing is so cute. So that's The Proud Little Kitten. Next up, we have The Modern Storybook. This one is from 1944, but it was originally published 1931. And again, I think this one might've belonged to my grandpa because it's not signed on the inside and it seems like a grandpa type of book. This book is a collection of stories about like different transportation systems. And it's kind of funny because a lot of these stories seem like engines and stuff that are like overworked. <laughs> it's just a funny theme. 
The title page is also awesome. I also really like the way that the images are laid out in this book. It has kind of like a comic feel because all of the other picture books I've looked at, there's no, um, the images aren't like boxed into a composition. They just kind of float through the page and with the words. So this one is really different than that. And then the title goes across each page and I love the font and the underline of this. And then there's some really cool creative drawings in here. I think it's just so well designed. And then the blimp story is one of my favorites because it's just more like of the era. I think that today there probably wouldn't be a blimp story. This book is from the 30s, so blimps were more of like a big deal, like they wanted them to be a thing back then. So I think it's funny that blimps are included in the modern storybook. And then lastly, we have a super tiny Walt Disney's Cinderella and the Magic Wand. And I love how tiny this is. This one is copyright 1950 and it's super lightweight. And then the back says Better Little Books Library with a collection of like other tiny books. And when I first flipped through this, you notice that some of the pages have like little spots of green. So I thought that someone had colored it in, but it's actually just printed. And I think it's cool that they stuck with just one color because I feel like green is kind of unexpected for Cinderella. It just adds a little bit of dimension to the pages. Every page has like this little boxed image and then some text under it. And it's so cute. I remember loving like miniature books when I was little. So I really like this one. Let me know if you have any cool vintage children's books and what they are or if your grandparents still have their picture books. Thank you for looking at those books with me and I'll see you next time. Bye!